Today's video is going to be a review of all questions from Category 4 in the 2019 version of the Algebra 1 EOC for the state of Texas. And I'm going to work through all uh, some test taking strategies and calculator tips and strategies that will hopefully be helpful to you for your tests. And you will feel absolutely 100% prepared for this test because you will, you're prepared and you will do awesome. So number two is the first question. It says, a golfer hit a golf ball from a tee box that is six yards above the ground. The graph shows the height in yards of the golf ball above the ground as a quadratic function of x, the horizontal distance in yards of the golf ball from the tee box. What is the domain of the function for this situation? Anytime you see the word domain, what do we write above it? X values. So what are the X values? What I really like my students to do is to, you know, label, right? Let's label the graph. What are we looking at? But if you really struggle with stuff like that, you know, you can just say, okay, X values. I know an ordered pair is written X comma Y. The domain is going to be from right here, which is zero to right here, which is 230. X is everything in between. Okay, so lowest point is zero. Highest point is 230. X is everything in between, okay? If it's everything in between, arrows point that way, and I have a less than or equal to sign. So which one is the same as what I just wrote? It's F. So that's the domain for this situation, right? And this is a great example of we have a functional domain for quadratic functions that's always all real numbers, and then a situational domain, which we can say in this situation, we got a, we've got a golf ball that's hit, right? And it's hit 230 yards, okay? We start at zero yards, it's hit 230 yards. And that's because if you really wanted a label, this represents distance, and then this represents height in this situation. So let's move on to problem number 12. The graph of quadratic parent function f, okay? Which, what's the parent function? All right, it's just y, well, f, right? So we've got f of x equals x squared was transformed to create the graph of g of x, which is f of x plus 2 minus 5, which graph represents g. So if you know your transformations, then you know inside the parentheses, all right, that's going to move left 2, right? Outside the parentheses, minus 5 means we're going to move down 5. So you might be able to tell which one shows that. But again, anytime you have something, right, you could always... Um, you could always, well, uh, should you, yeah, you can graph it, but it would look something like this. G of X, this would be Y equals, okay, and you can't do F of X plus 2, right? You can't graph that, but it would be X plus 2 squared minus 5, okay? So left 2 down 5 is right here. We're taking that vertex, right, because it looks like this right? Oh, it kind of looks like that. I'm drawing a really rough sketch, but left two, down five, vertex right there, and my answer is H. Let's move on to the next problem. Number 14, what is the positive solution to this equation? So what you can do is you can set it equal to zero. How do I do that? I subtract 135 from both sides, and now what I get is 4x squared plus 12x minus 135. I can graph that to be y equals. Okay, so set it equal to zero, move everything to one side, graph it. Where does it cross my x-axis? Find those solutions. You're looking for the positive one. Okay, so your test-taking strategy is to set it equal to zero, graph it, find the point of intersection on the x-axis, and you're looking for the positive solution. And that answer is 4.5. If you need to pause the video and try to do that now, I would. And then big thing is being able to plug it in on your calculator. I'm sorry, plug it in on your calculator. What am I doing? I'm not doing that right now. I am going to uh, put it into the grid, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is you can specify positive or negative. If it's positive, do you have to write a positive? No, but can you? Sure. But what I have my students do is just 4.5 and then graph bubble in a 4. Don't forget to bubble in your decimal and then bubble in the 5.
Let's move on to number 19. Number 19 says, a company collected data for the number of text messages sent and received using a text message application since October 2011. The table shows the number of text messages sent and received in billions over time. The data can be modeled by a quadratic function. Which function best models the data? So when it best models the data, it may not always be perfect, okay? But it typically is on these type of problems. So go through your answer choices, right? Anytime you have a, a function, right? It's just fancy schmancy for y. You can plug it into y equals, look at your table of values, which one matches, right? But it's in billions, just remember that. So go through your answer choices and look at the table to see which equation matches the best. And if you want, you can do that now because I'm about to give you the answer. Your answer is B. When you plug in y equals 0.072t squared minus 0.5t plus 2.73, these ordered pairs, right? Each of these is an ordered pair is in your table. Let's move on to number 21. Number 21, which graph best represents y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 1? Again, you're given an equation in your problem. Awesome, test taking strategy. Where do we start? Graph it on your calculator. Be sure to look at your table to make sure points match, right? So my answer is A, but what I really want you to do is make sure, for example, 3, 8 is a point on your graph, okay? If there's another point that you can see, like right here, 5, 4 needs to be a point in your table when on your calculator, okay? Just make sure because sometimes they're very, very similar, right? So for example, if you look at D, it kind of looks, it kind of looks the same, but like 310 is not a point that's in the table of values if you were to graph y equals negative x squared plus six x minus one on your calculator. Now, for those of you who like remember some of the rules for quadratics, this negative out in front tells me it's gonna open up or down. It's gonna open down, right? It's gonna look like that, which means I can eliminate C and I can eliminate B. So if you can eliminate answer choices, that is a really good um, strategy to do whenever you're working through a test like this. Number 28, the graph of a quadratic function is shown on the grid. Which function is best represented by this graph? I love these problems because now you're given all of these equations, okay? And I can just plug them into y equals. So go through your answer choices. Remember to look at your table of values. Make sure three negative nine is a point in your table, right? Make sure six zero and zero zero are points on your table. Make sure it looks like this and opens up. And your answer is, if you wanna pause the video and do that now, I would suggest doing that. I'm about to give you the answer and it's H. Let's move on to problem number 33. Number 33, the graph of f of x equals x squared was transformed to create the graph of g of x equals f of x minus 9. Which statement about the graphs is true? So if you've already watched the video over the previous 2017-2018 versions, you might already know what to do on this one. But if f of x equals x squared, right, f of x equals x squared, anywhere I see f of x, I can replace it with what? x squared. So in g of x, I can replace f of x with x squared. So if I do that, then g of x equals, I'm going to replace f of x with x squared, minus 9, which statement about the graphs is true. Once you do that, now you have that equation. When you have an equation, you can always plug it into y equals, right? g of x is fancy schmancy for y. Okay, it's just in function notation. So if g of x equals x squared minus 9, then y equals x squared minus 9. And then go through your answer choices and see which is true. Okay, so what is true? The graph of g is a reflection of the graph. Nope. The vertex of the graph of g is 9 units to the right. Nope. The graph of g is a reflection of the graph. Nope. The y-intercept of the graph 
is nine units below the y-intercept of the graph of f. That's exactly what happened, right? I could plug this into y1, I could plug this into y2, and your calculator, when you do that, will graph y1 first, then y2, it'll graph after that, and you can see that that second parabola that was graphed was moved nine units down. Number 40, which value of x is a solution to this equation? What I would do right here, just set it equal to you know y and graph it on your calculator and find the x-intercepts, okay? Graph it on your calculator. That's probably the best strategy for this. So graph it on your calculator and find the x-intercepts. And then which one of those is one of these? Go ahead and do that now. And actually, if you need help doing that, um, I have videos, tutorial videos over calculator um, tips and strategies. And um, there's one that's in there over how to find the x-intercepts of a quadratic function. So your answer is, if you wanna pause the video and do that now, I'm about to give you the answer, it's J. Number 43, we are rocking and rolling. Which function is equivalent to, equivalent to, y equals three times x plus two squared plus seven? Graph it and see which function graphs the same, right? So your test taking strategy is to graph it and see which function graphs the same. Plug this into y1, right, right here. Then plug each of these into y2 and see which one is the same. That's your test taking strategy. If algebra is like totally your thing, you can um, work through this and convert it to um, standard form. It's in vertex form, convert it to standard form, and that's x plus two times x plus two. Then you'll distribute the three, then you'll add seven, make sure you're only combining like terms and you would get b, right? That's how you can do that algebraically, okay? But test taking strategy, graph that in y1, when you plug in this into y2, you'll see it doesn't graph the same. So it's not that one. Go to the next one. When you plug this into y2, you'll see it just overlaps it, right? So it'll graph it first really slow, your parabola. And then that second one, it'll graph the same one, right? Right over it, okay? So let's move on to the next one, number 46. 2019 version, category four, algebra one EOC. The, gra the graph of quadratic function k is shown on the grid. Which statements are best supported by the graph of k? You've got to go through this and eliminate answer choices. There's no way to do it. So which statements? Okay, I, the first one. The x-intercept is located at negative 3, 0. Okay, negative 3, 0. The x-intercept, is that true? It sure is. The coordinates of the y-intercept are 0, 9. Here's my y-axis. 0, 9 is up here. Yes, that is correct. The axis of symmetry. Again, with all of this, you've really got to know your vocabulary. That is so important with quadratics. The axis of symmetry, that's that line. Whoa, not a very good axis of symmetry that I'm drawing. Splits that parabola in half, right? It's perfectly symmetrical. And that is x equals negative 3. That's a true statement, right? So Roman, num Roman numerals 1, 2, and 3 are all true. So your answer is J. Let's move on to number 50 from the 2019 version. What are the domain and range of this quadratic function? Okay, domain, X values, range, y values okay can we eliminate any answer choices this is a good good strategy can we eliminate any answer choices sure j says the domain is g of x remember g of x f of x stuff like that that's fancy smanchy for y it's not going to be j that would not be written correctly okay but you've got g of x equals negative one fourth times x minus 17 squared plus 61 g of x is schmanchy fancy for y when you have y equals in your problem, you can plug it into y equals on your calculator. So do that now. What you're gonna do is graph it and find the vertex, right? Because your functional domain 
for every quadratic function is always all real numbers, which means F and H are possible answers. I can eliminate G. Your range is what's affected, right? Because your parabola can either open up, which that's a minimum, or it can open down, and that's a maximum. So, you know, your, your range is either Y is greater than that Y value, or it's less than or equal to that Y value. So in this case, it opens down, right? Which means your range, so it's gonna look like this, which means your range is going to be Y is less than or equal to that Y value of your vertex. So the range is less than or equal to the Y value of the vertex, right? Less than or equal to, oh, wait a second, look at H, range has an X in it. I can eliminate H. On letter F, says the domain is all real numbers. The range is G of X is less than or equal to 61. If you were to graph this, which I would if I were taking this test because I'm just like that, I'm going to make sure I get it right. I'm going to graph this. I'm going to find the vertex. The Y value of that vertex is going to be 61. And because my parabola opens down, it's going to be Y is less than or equal to. 61.